Hello, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today, we are going to do a fast and loose watercolor tonalist landscape painting. In front of me, I have a quarter sheet of Stonehenge Aqua that I started saturating with water. Um, however, my brush, I think, had a little bit of pigment on it, so it kind of got toned a little bit. So that's okay. We'll just roll with it. So it's 100% cotton, 140-pound cold press. Um, we'll just have fun. So I'm not working from a photograph. I am not doing a study of any master paintings. I am just looking to have fun and just, you know, spread some paint on paper. Which has been weird because the past, well, last month I did a lot, a lot of looking at, um, master paintings and studying that and lately I've been playing with a lot of Conte and charcoal and um, looking at the Gibson girls and playing around with that aspect with this I'm going to take my colors go wet and wet and work back and forth I'm using the approach that the tonalist oil painters use where they'll put their pig pigment in and they'll use a paper towel to wipe back so they work with oils and they'll have it thinned out and they'll use a smooth surface and I do a similar thing but with watercolor I feel like I'm stumbling a little bit over my words I apologize I um, had some really good tea a few moments ago. It was a 2004 uh, Day Eye production of a Puer tea. And it was, I think, Hong Kong stored. So, of all things, it tastes like moss, forest floor, um, which may sound strange, but it's really good. And um, the caffeine in it is kind of interesting. All right, let's see. Hammy, no laugh yet, Hammy. Let's grab a little bit of ultramarine. I'm putting it over that raw sienna so it's gonna gray down. But I think that'll be fine. Just trying to get a smooth, interesting transition. I may switch things up and wind up going with some uh, texture, but let's see. So you can see that gray that's starting to take place. It's a little greenish, but you really don't get that much um, green with ultramarine and raw sienna. So from left to right, You'll see that I have a gradation lighter on this side and I'll do a little bit of a vertical gradation so as we go up we have a change as well. I'm going to dive in with some lamp black. Put a little bit of clouds and pull out some light portions with the paper towel. You can experiment with um, Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray with, mixed with Alizarin Crimson gives you that mauve color. Different things to do. All right. Stretch my paper out. Let's establish a distant horizon. I started playing around with the raw sienna to get some shape, but I think we'll come up here. Fun fact, Hammy, watch out. Fun fact, my Facebook timeline said that four years ago I had posted two um, watercolor paintings and I could tell they were both studies so I'm about 
little bit more than four years into painting with watercolor. That means five years ago is when I had started with the Chinese brush painting. You got hammy cat hair everywhere. Right, this will be our distant. Let's start building up our scene. Hammy has made his way into my lap. Um, my chair, the top of it, has kind of like crumbled. Um, it has that fake leather with the foam underneath it. So I tried taping it and I was just like, you know what? In Walmart, picked up a new stool for um, less than 20 bucks. But it's about an inch or two higher than my previous stool, and that's just uh, throwing me off a little bit. But I have the old stool next to me, so since Hammy likes to be in my lap when I paint, he can at least hop up next to me. Now he's half on that stool, half on my leg. All right. I think I am thinking I might come in a little bit over this background after we do a dry off. So what I'm gonna do is grab some burnt umber, warm up my foreground a little bit, maybe even grab some lamp black. Bring a little reflection down here in preparation for trees. And even go with a little bit of ultramarine. A little bit of a watercolor in here. So even though I drank tea, which has caffeine in it, I have, uh, we, we're what, halfway through June? I'm over a year and a half, well no, sorry, half a year without um, caffeinated energy drinks. So very excited about that. So those things are definitely not good for you. There's way too much um, caffeine and energy that's not needed. All right, so just kind of shaping out my landscape, getting an idea for what I want to do, kind of preparing for where I potentially want to put trees. I might even, look, you can see Hammy's face in the bottom corner. He definitely wants to be on top of this painting. That means that this brush is bordering on four years old with all this hair falling out of it at this point. Nice gentleman followed me on Instagram and uh, messaged me. Turns out he's a teacher in the parish over and he's just getting, well, he's I think about a year into watercolor. So that's really cool. And I'm really excited because if he ever has any questions or anything like that, I can actually send some supplies over his way since he's so close. So I'm really happy about local artists. I think I'm relatively pleased with the start of this composition. I am going to pause the camera and do a dry off. We'll see how things lighten off. And then we're gonna go in and work our way back to front, uh, creating our scene. 
So let me pause the camera. We'll do a dry off. Okay. So I'm going to grab a light wash of ultramarine and work my way back to front. Really don't have too much in mind for this composition. It's more just um, painting just a paint and see what comes out of it. I'll have those far distant trees kind of popping up. Do an even lighter wash right here for this lighter area. Let's darken it a little bit. Some light red oxide. Feed it into the bottom portion. Strengthen it a little bit more. Now, I've been using this quill. I wonder if I mentioned that. I usually use the number four. But the quill has been pretty fun for different shapes. I think what I want to do. vertical elements in for tree trunks for areas that are dark just scrape back and areas that are light just kind of go in That's way too much ultramarine. It's still wet, so just playing with that variety there. I'm gonna try to ground them in place. Let's um, bring a path of trees towards us. Let's have a group of trees roll here. This will be the bottom portion, little shadows. And they'll come from here, come up, and over this little bend. My line might be a little too connected there, but I'll allow it. Let's um, a little bit warmer. Raw sienna. Sorry, burnt sienna to the mix. These are going to be bigger. Go over those background trees. This guy comes almost dead center in the paper, so bring that out a little bit. Alright, then we start up again over here. And we'll end with a big tree that'll stop the eye from going off the page. We are going to have the shadows from them. So I'll just pull a little shadow action directed from that light. This way, and the way I'm just imagining this is light source, 
So I'm just using kind of like the radius, the spokes of a wheel, and wherever that points is the direction the shadow is going to go. So here, shadow. Here, shadow would go here if we had an object. Here, like that. Okay. Um, with shadows, I think probably a lot of books will say this, but um, Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting again. You'll have those darker shadows near the base of the object. I'm kind of just going back and forth between the two brushes. I need to scrape some vertical elements so I can get some tree action in, branches, trunks. And I'll just alternate between scraping and painting in. And if I feel like it's too wet and wet, I can do a dry off and play with it over that. You just won't be able to scrape. Okay, here's the top of that edge coming towards us. Hey, Percy Pooh. I just love how Percy doesn't really meow. She kind of does like that chirping. I'm just going to switch the foreground a little bit. Um, black and raw sienna. Matte black. Just so I can start. Getting my tonal variety. Just kind of putting that in. Cool it off with some ultramarine. It's darker though. Start creating the edge of this bank. Just grab the squirrel mop for that horizontal strokes for the water. I think if I grab the number one, put some vertical elements back in here. Might just benefit from a dry off in a moment. This might be a little too dark, but that's fine. Kind of using that side brush technique that you'll see with Alan, Alan Owen's work and um, David Usher. Those are two YouTube watercolorists that have a lot of content and a lot of information. I think they would laugh if I said two very old men with a lot of information. Let's bring that up. Strengthening that tree more. I'll probably darken this area more and bring something out in front of it see what happens. All right, I'm going to do a pause for another dry off. All right. Now, let's see. Ultramarine, just raw sienna, just mixed in a dark gray. Let's, um, to our next layer of trees. Shadows would come out. Ground them with a little bit of brush. I'm just gonna use this to place them. 
probably go back to the hake for some foliage marks. Let's grab some burnt sienna. Start forming that bank edge right there. Okay. Let's see how gently and go with the hake. Let's see if we can build up these trees. A little bit of light red. Cast those shadows back. Might play around a little bit more in there. other side. Put some groupings. Just kind of mapping out. Working relatively fast because I think I have 15 minutes of video that I can film left on my phone. So I have not cleared out the other painting videos after I uploaded them. All right, shadow's gonna come that way and shadow's gonna come down. So just working with that spoke aspect that I talked about earlier. Let's grab ultramarine and raw sienna. I'm just using that as my foliage color. Bring some of that down below. Gonna grab some lamp black, throw that on the darker portions, bring that down below. Sienna, just using more pigment. My brush is really dry right now, so let's grab a little bit of water. Start throwing some textures in here. I'm gonna grab some gamboge, gamboge. A bit yellower aspect. Been playing around with that a lot lately. It's a strong mustard color that you can kind of really use to add glow. The trees are looking a little weak. So let me pause and do a dry off. I'm just checking my time, 10 more minutes. All right, so the camera is gonna jump a little bit because I decided to just pause, um, try to clear out some files and then get right back into painting. 
And while I was doing that real quick, I was really, really forcing the whole atmospheric perspective here. And as you look into that distance, you see how blue everything is. So much so that I made everything look almost like a snow scene in the distance while we have more um, life in the foreground. So I'm probably gonna wind up experimenting with um, doing a wash of um, gamboge, gamboge over everything to try to just warm it up some. You can either interpret it currently as a winter type feel, everything back here, or as a really hot, hazy day. Maybe um, there's a lot of people out mowing and it's um, kicking a lot of dust up into the air. But I am gonna try to move things into a warmer direction. Give a feel to this edge. And I might even go just like very dark tonally in some spots. The lamp black. Now we're painting loose. In fact, let's do a dry off and let's see what it looks like if we were to pass that gamboge gambage over everything. All right, so watch closely, see what you think. Let me know what you think as we do our experiment here. So I'm gonna use the squirrel mop, try to get a light wash of this gamboge. I don't really glaze too often, but when you do, you really don't wanna hit the area too much over and over again because you start lifting up the pigment underneath. Okay, now a stronger mix of it. Put the edges here. So I'm just trying to pass one pass over each spot. Um, and bring it right back up in here. Even bring it up to that tree line. We'll warm up by the trees pass into select spots. Let's do that. Not the whole tree, just the sides catching light. Light's coming from here. We'll get a glow around it. There you go. That really kind of freshened things up. We'll see how it dries. But another thing I want to do is grab that with a little bit of ultramarine see what type of green we can get and now feed in a little bit of variety I'm really not a person that uses color by any means if you watch the channel you'll know that I use a lot of just kind of monochromatic tonalist experiments we can even see how much we can warm up or this whole foreground. Ultramarine, Gamboge. It is summertime down here in Louisiana. We've been having 90 plus days for quite a while now. So Everything is green. In fact, we haven't really been getting much rain right where I am. So I think I need to actually water my yard in Louisiana, which is weird. I'm not sure if we kind of have a drought going, but um, that being said, at this point, I mentioned on the channel that I do kind of the longboarding and um, the long distance skateboarding. 
and I wear sunglasses when I do it because it's just you know bright out darkening up wow we're just adding so much more life to this and it really had me thinking about how I'm riding on my longboard down these backcountry roads you know, um, you know, it's better than doing like a city area, something safe, you know. Um, I'm doing that. I have my sunglasses on and every so often I take them off just to see how different the sunglasses make things look in comparison to uh, what's actually taking place. And sometimes I want to, um, well, I think I might bring this down here and let this be part of the water. I keep on dropping this tool. Okay. Sometimes I almost want to ride without the sunglasses so I can see everything for what it is. Did a painting the other day on the on the channel. I don't know if I released it yet. It was just kind of um, some water from a photograph. It was painting from a photograph, and there was some water. I think we put in some white birds. The next day that I went and rode down that road, um, it was all dry. They pumped out that pond. So with the crawfish ponds. Once they really don't start yielding that much, they'll um, pump out the water. And then from there, they will, um, so they pump it out into a coolier canal. They plow it and plant uh, rice. So they alternate between rice and crawfish within it. I asked my buddy, well, how do they harvest the rice or do they harvest the rice? He said large scale productions, I think, harvest it, and small scale, I think, just plant it, and that's um, the food for the crawfish. They think they eat the roots. So that was interesting. I wanted to take a picture for you all so you could actually see that area and how it was before and after. But, um,. Once I get rolling on the skateboard, I really don't want to stop, especially since it's a long distance type deal. You know, I'm talking about like 10 miles or more. And it's good exercise. Might be fun to scrape in some rocks do a dry off and maybe even put in a foreground tree, something popping up here. Okay, let me pause and we'll do a dry off. Okay, so I want to put a tree here, but I don't want to bring it up to the very top of the page. I want to bring it up higher than this fella so that we can get our perspective going. So I'm trying to limit myself to my highest leaves in that area. I know that one of my biggest flaws is that I will go larger and larger with trees and I'll grow them larger and larger and I lose the sense of depth in the scene or at least you know like the size of the scene because of this. So, I'm going to place that in, we'll figure out our width of the base. Remember Matthew Clement saying something about a year ago? He's a um, painter slash arborist who um, I moderate admin a page with. And he had said something about how people either cut the trunks too narrow in a painting too soon 
or they go too high with the, the width of it? I'll have to ask them. Maybe one day we can get them to talk about generic aspects of trees and what he thinks gives them their feel. Taking the number one, just kind of playing about. It is a struggle keeping the tree at a minimal height. Let's um, switch over to the hake. See what we can do foliage wise. I want it to pop out against some of the background trees. Nothing stopping me from adding width to it. Let me know what you think about the tree. Um, usually I like, like I said, I'd like to work <laughs> larger with it or I make it grow larger. Um, here I'm trying to limit it so that we have some space of the sky above the tree. I do enjoy pure vertical trees from top to bottom. I don't know what it is about them, but it's just something I enjoy. Let's stay with that foliage for now. Maybe add some black broken branches here for little snippets of things coming up. Leave that background the way it is and just play around with some detail in the foreground. I think throwing in some darker layers will add some interesting depth. What I'll do is kind of a ridge and let it taper off here. The tree comes out and over. So we have a ridge and things are going to darken around it. Let's see if I can grab some more lamp black. <laughs> Use the scraping tool, get a variety of textures. Grab the squirrel. Let's even do the same thing with light red. And then let's grab a mixture of ultramarine and burnt umber on the back side. Textural marks. I did block out a lot of that background tree, which I knew I was going to wind up doing, but I'm okay with that. It's all in the name of figuring things out. A little texture on this far edge. I know I was going to leave that alone. Maybe we'll even use this guy for splattering. Grab some black. And let's do a dry off. All right, relatively dry. Um, I think I want to splatter some more black and then I want to play around with um, 
white wash. So we're going to see what happens with that and see what type of life and movement we could put into this. I Today, early today, I dropped off my car at the Kia dealership. I have a Kia. Um, some of the sensors were saying something. So I dropped it off and then went and got food with friend. And um, I'm going to take the white wash and just reconstitute what I can. I'm going to do a little bit of passages over the tops of these little scrapes and see how that accentuates, good or bad. I went into a thrift store and they had a matted framed print of a, I think it's Thomas Moran, one of the painters I greatly admired from the 1800s. I thought about buying it. I don't know if, um, I don't really have much wall space currently, but if I had a house, I think I would. Uh, what else? We also have a matted framed print of a Rembrandt, Rembrandt charcoal drawing. And they've had it for a while there. I've also looked at that quite a bit. So, maybe one day I'll have some art hanging up in the house. I just have some of my art. Um, it's not to be like conceited or anything like that. It's just simply, since I do some farmer's market stuff, it really just helps with the wall space and the floor space. It's just splattered in a bit. Let me know if you like the splatters on this one. But one day. All right, last dry off and we'll take a look. All right, I have this um, vintage Koenor. Is that how you pronounce the brand? So one of the rapidographs. I have it filled up with um, platinum carbon, uh, the platinum carbon ink, the fountain pen ink that um, is light fast. It'll clog some fountain pens due to the particles. So you kind of want to really watch out what you're putting it in. But this guy has not had much trouble at all with it. And it's been inked with it for a while. Throwing a lot of birds in wherever those dots landed. Just as an experiment. I can't just paint, just got to see what can happen with everything, right? And we'll sign down here. I hope you enjoyed. Please uh, like, subscribe, and follow. If you want to support this channel, um, I have a whole bunch of ways down below. If you ever want to follow along, you are more than welcome to uh, follow along, sign your own name to it. You have my express permission to sell anything you do whenever you are following any of my works, anything on this channel whatsoever. I want you guys to be successful. I want you to have fun. And I want you guys to have money for art supplies. Art supplies are expensive, but um, definitely worth having them and if you're thinking about getting at the painting do it I highly recommend trying it there's a lot of um, 
cheap ways to get into it. In fact, if you ever have any questions on that, uh, let me know. And I'll try to address uh, cheaper alternatives. And if I can't find any solutions, I know some people uh, like Joe Menza and other people that will experiment with different brands and um, cheaper tools and materials and papers. And they are more than willing to share that information. And it's just a super helpful community. If anybody's ever hiding any information painting wise, it just makes me wonder. Which is fine, I understand because some people make a living on art alone. And this is just like a fun hobby, right? For me. I would love to be able to do painting full time. Sorry, I just couldn't resist taking some lamp black and just playing around and making some marks with it. I think that helped to get that little extra pop I wanted. All right, y'all take care. Have a great day. Bye.